Hi guys, this is Neil. Welcome back to my channel. Today I will be painting cute owls. I haven't done cute animal paintings for a while, so I thought that it's a good time to make this. Today I'm going to be painting great horned owls, but you can change it to any types of owls that you want by just changing the facial features. So just like usual, I'm going to begin by drawing out the basic shapes first. And for the body, I want to create sort of a pear shape. And if it's hard for you to create the shape, you can create it by two ovals. The one is a little bit smaller on top and the bottom oval is a bit larger for the belly. And once you've done that, you can try to outline the outside of it by leaving a little bit of space so it still looks nice and organic. To add a little bit of movement, you can also make the owls look like they're tilting the head. And to draw that, the pear shape will have a curve that is somewhat similar to a jelly bean. Next, I'm going to show you how to draw the mask. I'm not sure if that's what it's called, but I'm just going to call it that. It's basically the facial features of the owl. And you can do this in several different ways, and you can even use different styles of drawing the eyes or painting the eyes later on and so for this first one you can make a heart shape and I made the eyes really big and for the beak I just made a triangular shape or you can also make a diamond shape. For the next one I'm just going to make two really big eyes and I outlined the eyes again and I also made the pupil really big like the first one and also add the beak without the mask itself and you can also paint it this way. The next one that I'm going to draw out is what I'm going to use and this I just made sort of like a goggle shape and I finished off with the beak and for the eyes I made it very small and I really like this simplistic look because I think that it gives the owl a really innocent face. If you would like, you can also give the owls expressions and for this one, I made a goggle again but this time I made the owl look angry. So you can really change this up. You can even give it a little bit of eyebrows to give more of an expression or you can change the eye shapes. These are just basically alternatives that you can pick and choose yourself or you can even create your own so you can customize your own painting according to your liking. With these masks or faces, you can also change the direction of where the owls are looking. So if you just slightly tilt it to the left, you can make it look like the owl is looking to the left side like in the first one and the one next to it looks like it's looking to the right. Now I'm going to shift the face upwards and now the owl looks like it's looking upwards. For the last one, you can draw it looking straight up or if you tilt it slightly down, it looks like it's looking down. So these are the different types of tilts that you can make and you can even add this to the tilting head that we created before to give a little bit of character to your owls. Another feature that you can play around with is the belly of the owls. I'm going to show you an example where I also draw out all the facial features of the owl that I'm going to be painting later on. So here for the feathers on the head, I like to draw it out starting with a diagonal line and as I get to the bottom, I'm going to draw out small curved line repetitively until I reach the bottom of the line. I'm just going to finish off with the detail on the belly and also the feet. For the feet, I just drew out three ovals on each side. Here is another design for the belly with curved lines beginning from the bottom of the belly. You can also play around with this and also add the fur when you're painting later on. Let's move on to the colors now. So here are the colors that I'm going to be using. The main color that I'm going to use here is the burnt sienna. Then I'm going to pick three dark primary colors. So basically a red color, blue, and a yellow. I picked the darker tones because I want the colors to stay muted when mixed together. So I picked Rose Matter for the red, Ultramarine Deep for the blue, and Permanent Yellow Deep for the yellow. Having these primary colors will help you create many different shades 
of brown by adding the different muted hues to the burnt sienna. And because you have the primary colors, you can make all sorts of different colors like muted purple, greens, and things like that. And by just changing the ratio, you can really change the tones. I'm going to show you the secondary hues with the browns. I'm pretty sure you guys know that you can just use the yellow with the burnt sienna, ultramarine deep with burnt sienna, or just the rose matter with burnt sienna, but this time you can also mix in two of those hues. So for this one, I made a purple by mixing ultramarine deep and the rose matter, and I added the burnt sienna to that. And as you can see, it can create this really deep brown color. By changing up the ratio and adding more rose matter into the mix, you can also create a different tone. Now I'm going to mix an orange color, and for this I use the rose matter and the permanent yellow deep, and this is the color that I created. It also depends if you add more yellow, the color will become a little bit brighter. And from that, I'm just going to add the burnt sienna, and this is the kind of brown that I come up with. So as I mentioned, if you add a little bit more of the yellow, you can also still make a brown, but this time it's just going to be much lighter. Now I'm going to mix a very muted green tone, and I use the ultramarine deep mixed with permanent yellow deep. And this is the color that it came up with, a very dark muted green. Then I'm going to mix it with the burnt sienna, and as you can see, the brown is no longer warm, but has a slight muddy green color to it. I'm also going to mix in just the ultramarine deep with the burnt sienna and as you can tell it creates this really dark brown color and if you create a thicker consistency it'll turn out to be a bit more black and this is the color that I'm going to be using for the eyes. You can try to mix and experiment more tones of brown and see what sort of tones you can create, but I think this is a good base example. I'm going to pick three of the colors here that I think will look nice together. If you want, because the hues that I picked are also quite muted, you can just mix those hues together to create more of a colorful swatch for the owls, but I'm just going to stick to the browns for mine. For this, I'm going to paint it freehand, but of course you can draw out yours first, but make sure to use a hard pencil so you can draw the outline very lightly. So for the first owl, I'm going to use the light orange mixed with burnt sienna, just like the one that I picked before, and I'm just going to outline the body of the owl first. I want to leave out the mask area because I want it to look lighter than the body so I also outlined that area to just separate it and I'm going to fill in the rest with a light consistency. And I'm working fairly quickly here because I don't want the outline to be completely dry so I can blend it nicely with the rest of the body. I'm reapplying the paint and water again because I want this area to be fairly wet because I'm going to use the wet on wet technique now. So I added a little bit more of the rose matter into the mix to create a tiny bit of a darker brown. And I used a thick consistency and I just applied it to the face area and also the top part of the body. I'm going to let this flow around one third of the way and you can move it around with your brush to see how far you want the darker part of the feathers to be. For the next one, I'm going to mix up the burnt sienna with the purple. For this one, I want the owl to be tilting its head just to change up the pose a little bit so the overall painting doesn't look too static. And I think this way it also gives a cute character to the owl. And I'm just going to do the same thing by leaving out the area for the mask or the eyes of the owl and then finishing up with the darker virgin ore the thicker consistency of the same paint but I think for this one I also added a little bit more of the purple compared to the brown just to add another dimension to the hue. For the next one I used a green mixture with the burnt sienna and I just applied it the same way as I did with the other owls. For the next one, I waited for the base color to be dry 
and I added the exact same color as the base but I created a really thin consistency just to give a slight coloration to the mask area and I also tried to soften the edges to create a smooth transition between the body and the mask. To create the nice transition, I tried to do a circular movement with my brush slightly touching the edges of the mask and this way the dampness from the brush slowly activates the surrounding dry paint and then it blurs out the line so the edges doesn't look too stiff. Whenever you feel like there's too much paint and the mask area is getting a little bit too dark, you can also use some tissue to take off the excess paint before it dries out. Then clean your brush and redistribute the rest of the paint again to get an even surface. Next, I'm going to be painting the wings and also some textures on its belly so it doesn't look too flat. For the wings, I just use a bit of a thick consistency of the same color from the base and paint a curved line following the belly to represent the wings, with the line getting slightly thicker near the belly area. And for the texture, I used a thin consistency of the same color again, and I make a vertical stroke motion to give a slight feathery effect, and I just used the same color from the base color but you can also change up the color if you want so as you can see on the middle one because i still had a little bit of the first color left and i mixed in some of the purple it still has the residual color so the hue becomes a little bit yellow but i think because the colors that we're using are quite limited and we're just changing up the ratio of certain things I think the hue actually brings a little bit of interest to the painting so at this point you can just add a thin consistency of a different hue to the belly if you want to. Next I'm going to start adding the detail on the face now and basically I just want to frame the light area with again a thick consistency of the same color of the base and for this I do small diagonal strokes along the eyes to give more of a textured feathery look and I'm going to repeat this for the rest of the owls. The owls are looking a little bit scary and possessed at the moment but I assure you we're going to work on the face. So next I added a light consistency of the same base color again and I created two rings on the inside part of the mask now and I'm going to apply the same thing for the rest of the owls. This time I also used a smaller brush just to get to the inside so I don't accidentally put too much water and create a really big puddle and mess up the feathers with the darker consistency on the outside. Next I'm going to be painting the beaks and for this I created an orange color using the permanent yellow deep and rose matter and I just paint a triangular shape or you can also do a diamond shape in the middle of the masks. Next I'm going to finally paint the eyes to give the owl some life as to the creepy face from before. <laughs> to mix the colors, I use the Burnt Sienna with Ultramarine Deep. This will create a really dark brown and if you take a thick consistency of this, it'll look like black and I use my small brush to paint the eyes. You can paint the eyes just as small dots or circles but I like mine to be slightly oval. Next I'm going to be painting the claws or the feet, I don't really know what it's called but for this I used an orange mix from Permanent Yellow Deep and Rose Matter and I also mixed in a little bit of the Burnt Sienna. You can really use any color you want but this is just the color that I chose. Three upside down teardrop shapes or sometimes even a small curved line, you can also do that and I paint three of them on each side for all of the owls. Moving on to the ears now, I'm going to use the same color and this time I'm going to start painting a diagonal line and then I'm going to paint strokes pointing out 
making the line uneven and a little bit jagged on the side. I'm using a medium consistency here because we're still going to add on a darker consistency on top of this and I'm just going to apply the same thing for each of the owl using the same base color as the owl itself. For the darker consistency paint, I applied it at the top of each of the feathers and I want to create a separation between the two so it looks like there are two layers of the feathers on top of the masks. For the additional element, I decided to add a branch that the owl will be sitting on. For this, I used just any mixture that I have left on my palette. So I just mixed up the brown and you can really create different variations depending on the colors that you mix with it. To paint it, I paint using smaller strokes to create crooked lines so everything looks natural and not completely straight. I'm also painting this in a light consistency so I can build up the texture a bit later on. To build the texture, I took a thicker consistency than the initial base color but I'm still going to build this up so I used a medium consistency that I can still keep layering on little by little and at the bottom of the owls I also used a darker brown to create a little bit of separation just so the shapes of the owls and the branch doesn't merge together. As I layer more of the texture, I also keep darkening the brown color and also get a thicker consistency so I can layer on top. And this time I use the smaller brush just to get better fine lines. I'm making the lines randomly to create a bark texture and you can mix it with a little bit of dry brush also to create a natural texture. To give it a pop of color, I also decided to add a bit of leaf so I'm going to create tiny branches where the leaf can hang from and I used my small brush for this to make the lines very fine and for the green, I used a mixture of permanent yellow deep and ultramarine blue. I switched to my large brush to keep the leaf shape simple but you can add more detail if you want to. I personally feel like using the simplistic leaf shape so it doesn't take away from the painting. Like usual, I love adding splatters so I'm just going to take some of the base color from the purple and also from the first owl which is uh, the orange and the burnt sienna and I'm just going to splatter the colors around sparingly and where the paint is puddling I also just spread it out with my brush to vary the sizes of the splatters. If some of the splatters fell on the body of the owl you can also just take it off while it's still wet. So that's it for the video. This is basically the finished painting. I really enjoyed painting them because I find that they're very easy and simple to paint and you can even turn this into a cute owl pattern if you want to or even try different compositions. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!